Uh, hello everyone. Today we will see the topic related to El Nino and La Nina. Okay. So before that, I want to tell uh, you know a few basic things. Uh, after that, we will discuss about the El Nino and La Nina. Okay. So first thing is the moment of the air or the wind. We can say right. So wherever there is a high pressure, there are a packed particles. Say for example, you have taken a bunch or a uh, you know one kg of air. If the particles are packed and they are very close to each other, it means that there is a high pressure. So you can just say for example with the two with your two hands, if you push the air closer together, so the particles move closer and then there is a high pressure. So here, what they will do, the wind in between your hands will try to escape outside of your hands, right? So it means wherever there is a high pressure, the wind try to escape from there. And wherever there is a low pressure, the wind will go towards the low pressure area. It's, it's a very basic thing, right? So even uh, if you take the case of humans also, whenever you are in a high pressure situation, you try to escape from there, right? So the same concept is applicable to the wind also. Uh, therefore, wind always move from high pressure zone to low pressure zone because there is a vacancy to occupy. So this is one thing to be remembered. And one more thing related to the temperature is that that whenever there is an increase in temperature, for example, if you take a bunch of air and if you keep heating it, so the particles move away from each other, right? So here, whenever there is an increase in temperature, so what is happening? The uh, wind is getting low pressured, right? It is expanding. So the particle is moving away. So there is a low pressure zone. And whenever there is a, uh, you know, colding, I mean the cold coldness, if you take a bunch of air and if you keep it in freeze, the particles move, move closer. So the high pressure zone will be developed. So wherever there is a high temperature, there is a low pressure in the wind. And whenever there is a low uh, temperature, there is a high pressure in that wind. So you need to understand these two basic concepts of uh, the pressure, how the wind move from high pressure zone to low pressure zone and the temperature relation to the increase or decrease in pressure. So if you are clear with this, now let's uh, go with the uh, El Nino and La Nino concept. Let me share my screen. So I hope just a second. Yeah. So uh, let's now discuss uh, the El Nino and La Nino concept as we have already seen the uh, low pressure zones and then high pressure zone that we have uh, discussed the basic things related to the movement of wind and temperature. So before going into the El Nino and La Nino condition, let's see what is the normal condition uh, in the Pacific region, the Western Pacific region and the Eastern Pacific region, right? So uh, La Nina and El Nino are the two concepts which are dependent on the variation of the temperature in the Pacific region, Western Pacific region and Eastern Pacific region. So before knowing the La Nina condition, let's see the normal condition here. In the normal scenario, in the over the uh, uh, Pacific Ocean, there is a higher temperature in the Western Pacific region. For example, if we take uh, uh, here in this diagram, so this is a Western Pacific and this is a Eastern Pacific. Let's say here there is a 20 degree temperature. Here we have 20 degree and here generally it is less than that. So 15 degrees or 14 degrees or less than that. So here as there is a low temperature so pressure is higher the particles are packed so these winds from here will go towards the western pacific region because there is a low pressure as there is a high temperature so the particles are far away and there is a low pressure so these winds will escape towards this region from high pressure zone to low pressure zone so this is a normal condition so in case of normal condition there is a rainfall so here the winds move from colder to uh, you know uh, a warmer region and then they rise up they because of heatingness they will become uh, lighter and they will rise us up and as move uh, as they move above to the vertically above towards the sky so again they will go i mean gets colder and the precipitation that they are carrying will shun because as the particles are getting closer they cannot bear the water particles and they will drop in terms of rain so this is a normal condition which uh, is prevalent in the pacific ocean 
But in case of El Nino, let's see the case of El Nino. What happens? The temperature in the Eastern Pacific region goes beyond the Western Pacific region. As we have seen in the early case here, 20 degrees and here 14 degrees. Now in case of uh, El Nino, here there is a 20 degrees. That's fine. It, this is a normal thing like, but here it goes beyond 20 degrees, 20, 21, 22, or maybe 30 also. So what will happen as the temperatures has increased in the Eastern Pacific Ocean? So the winds are getting lighter and there is a particles getting, uh, you know, uh, you know, differentiated or they are moving far away each other. So here the winds here when compared to here are packed because at the 20 degrees here it is 30 degrees. So they are free now. So this winds now will pass towards this side. They will try to move this side. So this case of El Nino, there will be more rainfall in the Eastern Pacific Ocean in the Peru coast. So here because of the uh, higher temperatures and then low pressure zone form here there will be more rainfall but throughout the world not only in case of the western pacific region but throughout the world there will be decreased rainfalls only the western south american continent will receive the rains that's all rest of all the world except in few cases there is a less amount of rainfall that's why we don't want el nino we never quest for el nino right because it is a reduced rainfall throughout the world excepting the eastern pacific ocean right that is the that is called as el nino and now considering to the la nina condition so here we have seen it is a 20 degree and here we have assumed 14 degrees now what will happen in the western pacific ocean so this will heat up more beyond 20 so 20 will move to 25 30 something like that it is gets more warmer and this temperature is colder so here winds rather than normal condition when compared to the normal condition the winds will rush more intensely from this uh, high pressure zone the winds will quickly move and then there is a high intensity of rainfalls throughout the western pacific region and also most part of the world so here flood like condition will happen in the other parts of the world especially of the asian eastern asian continent and then there is a drought condition in the western uh, you know south america that is eastern pacific region so this is the case of lanina you need to remember with example with the temperature take 20 and 15 degrees as the normal condition and if it is going beyond 20 degrees in the western pacific region so it is a case of lanina where the temperature gets warmer and there is a low pressure zone and the winds will rush right the it is opposite for the uh, el nino condition there is a more warmer in the eastern uh, pacific ocean and there is a colder conditions in the western pacific ocean like here right so this is about El Nino and La Nina. Together they are called as ENSO or Southern Oscillation. Simply it is called as ENSO as well, right? Uh, so same thing. I mean that a combination event of La Nina and El Nino together called as Southern Oscillation or ENSO, right? So this is about the, uh, uh, you know, uh, La Nina, El Nino and La Nino. Now let's solve one question related to the UPSC civil services asked in 2011 this is the question asked in 2011 right so lanina is suspected to have caused recent floods in australia that is way back in 2010 how lanina is different from el nino they are asking lanina is characterized by usual cold wash ocean temperature in the equatorial indian ocean this is not the case lanino is the condition where there is a more warmer temperature in the western pacific region compared to the Eastern Pacific region. There is no case of Indian Ocean at all. So you can easily eliminate by just seeing this Indian Ocean itself. So this statement stands strong. Whereas El Nino is characterized by warm ocean temperature in the equatorial Pacific region. So this is also, uh, El Nino is a condition where there is a warm temperature in the Eastern Pacific Ocean. Yes, this may be uh, considered as correct, but first statement stands strong. First half of the statement stands strong. So first statement overall gets wrong, right? Now El Nino has adverse effect on the southwest monsoon of India. Yes, El Nino, when there is an El Nino condition, there is a drought-like situation in the uh, south, I mean the Indian as well as the Australian part, almost all parts of the world. But La Nina has no effect on the monsoon. La Nino do have the effect. It will create flood-like condition. So second statement also stands strong. So answer is D, neither one nor two. So this is the case of Yelnina and Lanina, right? So thanks a lot. This is a session for today.
keep subscribing our channel keep liking our video so that will motivate us to do more uh, for you we will come up with such topics even discussing with the previous year questions right thanks a lot have a great day. bye